JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, body found in vehicle, identified as police sergeant, gone missing. The St. Elizabeth Police have confirmed the identity of a decomposing body found in a vehicle in the community of Pepper, near Goshen on Saturday, as that of a 50-year-old police officer. Sergeant Lincent Smith, who was reportedly last seen by his common-law wife on Thursday, leaving home in Manchester, was yesterday morning found slumped over in his Toyota Tacoma motor truck at Friendship District in Pepper. The police were called to a remote area shortly after 9 a.m. where his body was found with blood coming from the left ear and mouth. The body was in a partial state of decomposition. The policeman's firearm was not found at the scene. A major probe is being conducted by the Era 3 Major Investigation Division. Teen bartenders on lottery scam and firearm charges. Two teenage bartenders were arrested and charged by the police when officers found a bag with a firearm, ammunition, and a paper with names, addresses, and the telephone numbers of people living overseas during a raid at the business establishment in Westmoreland yesterday. They have been identified as 19-year-old Kimberly Quest, otherwise called Kim, and 18-year-old Keisha MacDonald, otherwise called Dini, both of new works in the parish. Quest and MacDonald have been charged with illegal possession of firearm and ammunition and been in possession of identity information following the incident. Both women were charged after a police team conducted a raid at the bar where both Quest and MacDonald are employed. During a search, the police said a green camouflage bag hanging on a nail behind the counter was searched and a browning 9mm pistol containing a magazine with 11 cartridges were found. The incident happened about 3.15 p.m. The police said a further search of the bag revealed it also contained six 9mm cartridges and one lead sheet containing names, addresses, and telephone numbers of people living overseas. The women were then taken into custody and subsequently charged. Hanover man electrocuted while changing bulb. 24-year-old Ronald McFarlane of Logwood District in Hanover died from injuries he received after being electrocuted at his home in the parish yesterday. McFarlane was reportedly attempting to change a light bulb when he came in contact with high tension wires and was electrocuted about 11.25 a.m. The police were then summoned and upon the arrival, McFarlane's body was seen with severe burns. He was transported to hospital where his death was confirmed. The Lucy Fire Brigade was also summoned to extinguish the flames on the wires, the police said. BPO employee dies in suspected drowning in St. James. A young man in his early 20s is believed to have drowned at a villa in Ironshore, St. James, this morning. The deceased, employed to a business process outsourcing, BPO company Montego Bay, was found at the bottom of a pool at approximately 3 a.m. by a group of friends who were also at the villa. Efforts to revive their colleague using CPR, it is reported, proved futile. He was taken to the Cornwall Regional Hospital, where doctors pronounced him dead. Reports from the police saw that the BPO employee was part of a group that hosted a cookout at the villa on Saturday afternoon. However, after those in attendance left at approximately 5 p.m., a cleanup crew of eight remained at the facility. Superintendent of Police Vernon Ellis said the young man was the last seen alive on the pool deck by a female friend, who said she went to the bathroom and on her return, she could not find him. A search of the premises resulted in the location of his body at the bottom of the pool. It is believed that he fell asleep and fell over into the pool, said the police superintendent, who added that there was no visible evidence to suggest foul play. However, he was not ruling out anything as the investigations are conducted. Detectives who were on the scene gathering forensic evidence have collected three statements so far to ascertain how the youngster died, said Superintendent Ellis. It is understood that one of the females at the villa was celebrating a birthday. However, 
it is not clear whether the cookout was a birthday party. The police also could not confirm. Police arrest 11 people, seize three guns over 24 hours. The police are reporting that 11 people were arrested in connection with the seizure of three illegal guns and over 45 rounds of ammunition across the island in the last 24 hours. The police said one of the guns, a Browning pistol with 17 rounds of ammunition, was seized in Westmoreland. Two females were arrested in connection with this seizure. In St. Thomas, two men were taken into custody when a .45 caliber pistol with one round of ammunition was found in a vehicle during a stop and a search operation. Meanwhile, a Beretta 9mm pistol and 14 rounds of ammunition were seized by police from the Kingston Central Division during a pre-dawn operation carried out in Eddie Lane. No one was arrested in connection to this seizure. A joint police-military operation in the Kingston East Division also led to the seizure of 15 rounds of ammunition and the arrest of six people. The police did not reveal the identities of the arrested people. However, they further appealed to the public to report illegal firearms by calling Crime Stop at 311, Police 119 emergency number, or their nearest police station. JDF member charged with murder in connection with killing of Aslan Supercenter employee offered bail. The Jamaica Defense Force member, who was linked to the fatal shooting of an Azan employee last year, was offered bail in the corporate area criminal court on Friday. 31-year-old soldier Ronald Gray is accused of shooting Courtney Mento, a parking attendant at Aslan Supercenter in Crossroads. Chief Executive Officer of the Business Establishment, Melada Zan, who was at the forefront of speaking on the family's behalf, said Minto was allegedly shot after a verbal altercation with the soldier about a parking spot. Attorney representing the accused, JDF member, Queen's Counsel Peter Champagne confirmed that his client was offered bail. Last week, Director of Public Prosecutions, DPP Paula Llewellyn's office, recommended that the JDF member allegedly involved in the controversial fatal shooting be charged with murder. Family says inmate set on fire in lockup. Relatives of a Hanover man who was allegedly tied up and his two feet set on fire by his fellow inmates while in lockup are now seeking justice. One relative said that the man was picked up by the police at his home and later arrested on sexual misconduct charges. It is alleged that while locked up, he was held by other inmates, tied up with a marina, and his feet set on fire with the use of toilet paper. The relative was shocked when she saw him days later. Me walk over to the box and the court, where I stand up in her, and when me look over upon him, foot me off a ball out, the relative said. She said that he was barefoot, and the lower sections of both feet had large cuts and bruises. She said police told her that he was burned by the muffler of the motorcycle he was riding before being arrested. But me tell him that him don't want a bike and him can't even ride a bike, the relative stated. She said that he was granted $100,000 bail and later taken to the doctor by officers. She said that after he got bail, he told them that inmates attacked him. She said that he used to return to court on June 7 but cannot walk properly. The man's father is equally upset. Them lock up my son and him leave her with him two foot. Nothing ever wrong with him two foot. And him going to lock up on the prisoner them in the time up and burn him up, he said. Me want to know where prisoner get matches and lighter in a jail. Me never know so them around chapin there that them all are used fire and burn up my son. The man's attorney said that she is aware of the incident and is awaiting a decision from his family if they plan to pursue the matter legally. She also advised the family to obtain a medical certificate. Jamaica has 93 new COVID-19 cases, 3 deaths. Jamaica recorded 93 new cases of the COVID-19 and the 3 virus-related fatalities yesterday, bringing the country's confirmed cases to 40,467 and the total fatalities to 945. According to the latest statistics, 
From the Ministry of Health and Wellness, the recent deaths are an 88-year-old male from Trelawney, a 73-year-old female from Portland, and a 67-year-old male from St. Catherine. The Ministry also reported another death under investigation and two more deaths as coincidental. The new virus cases consist of 58 females and 35 males, with ages ranging from 5 months to 97 years. The new cases were recorded in St. James, 30, St. Anne, 20, St. Catherine, 13, Kingston and St. Andrew, 10, Westmoreland, 5, Manchester, 5, Trelawney, 4, Hanover, 2, Clarendon, 1, Portland, 1, St. Elizabeth, 1, and St. Mary, 1. The ministry said 188 patients recovered from the virus, pushing the total virus recoveries to 25,054. There are 22,096 active cases of the virus on the island. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.